Okay, this is a um, video describing a potential freeze-up at a baseboard hydronic heater in a two-zone system shown as following. I said potential, but it actually, it's an actual freeze-up, but the question here is what was the method or failure mechanism in this case. Now, in this particular case, when this freeze-up took place, the upstairs zone was set to 62 degrees. The downstairs zone was set to 45 degrees. That's 13 degrees above freezing. Now, you might say, if this zone is being kept at 46 degrees or 45 degrees, how could the baseboard freeze? And that's what this is all about. Um, the reason why I kind of was pushed into putting this together was recently I watched this um, docudrama. It's called a miniseries. It's not really a documentary, but it was kind of interesting. As you might know, Chernobyl reactor 4 exploded <laughs> and in the uh, docudrama in the control room one of the um, the lackeys other workers in the control room after the explosion went out to check on the reactor and came back and reported to the supervisor that the reactor wasn't there anymore uh, and that it had exploded and his supervisor said, that's impossible. It's impossible for an RMK-1000 reactor to explode. It can't happen. You're wrong. Okay, so it's a little bit in the light of this. Your first thought might be, no, oh, this is impossible. Okay, but now, this is now an engineering analysis. So this is <clears throat> the thermal model that we're putting together. It includes the upstairs, the downstairs thermostat, the downstairs baseboard, and the outside. These are all at different temperatures, naturally. The upstairs is considered to be a source, a temperature source. It's a control temperature, so this would be, in our example here, it could be, let's just say, 62 degrees. Okay. It's fixed at that because, of course, it's got a thermostat in the upstairs that's actually controlling it to 62 degrees, okay? The outside is considered to be a temperature source because that's nature. Nature is providing a certain temperature outside. It's in the winter. In this particular example, it's going to be cold, really cold, okay? Now, the in two internal nodes, these are not temperature sources at all. They, these nodes, these are influenced by the temperature around it. In particular, the two temperature sources that are influencing the temperatures in this room are the temperature setting of the upstairs zone and the outside temperature. It's going to be somewhere in between them. Okay, now, the reason why the upstairs zone is influencing the temperature in zone 2 is because there's not thermal isolation between these zones. There's no insulation, for example, on the floor between zone two and zone one. And the other little interesting part of this is that the boiler room, which controls both the zones, is actually on the same floor as zone two. So when zone one is running, the boiler, which can get can spit off quite a bit of um, heat, you know, that's not ideal because it's not actually going to zone one. It's actually going into zone two. Now, that is a form of a conduction path between zone one and zone two because the higher the temperature in zone one the more activity in the boiler room because it has to run it has to fire up more frequently so in this simplified model we are going to assume that there will be a certain amount of heat which is flowing from zone one into the downstairs zone and it's going to establish a certain temperature at the downstairs thermostat and the downstairs baseboard. 
and I've simplified this just by using resistors. These would be the so-called thermal resistors, like a bout of insulation might be called R19. This is the R, thermal resistance, okay? And in an actual model that you could have a thermal resistance between the here and here, for example, or between here and here, and that is not going to affect this particular result. This is not a perfect model, but it assumes that the heat flow is linear. In other words, if you double the temperature difference between indoors and outdoors, that you will double the amount of heat flowing between indoors and outdoors. And that's just a simplified model, first order model for heat flow. So this is not perfect. This is just a, an, an analysis, but it's gonna be pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, I think um, it's accepted that heat flow is rather linear these types of temperature differences that we're talking about. Okay, so now let's go to the next page. This is what we call the calibration of the model. So on a particular occasion, in order to get data for this model, the downstairs thermostat was set to 46. The upstairs thermostat was set to 62. The temperature outside was somewhere between 26 and 27. The outside temperature was not measured directly with a thermometer, but this was used from available historical temperature records. So this could have a little bit of an error, but 26 was what was recorded at a temperature recording station, let's say to the south, and this one to the north. So it's considered that it's probably somewhere between here, but local temperature variation could actually be a little bit more so. Now, the, rec the measured temperature at the downstairs thermostat was 50. It's set to 46. That means the downstairs zone is not operating, okay? And that's a critical component of this measurement. Downstairs zone has to be off in order to get these numbers. And so since 50 is considerably higher than 46, we can be fairly assured that this downstairs zone is off. And had it been off for several hours, I'm not sure exactly how many hours would be necessary, but you need the downstairs to cool from the heat that's coming from its own hydronic pipe. So this should be off for several hours. Okay, the downstairs baseboard recorded the temperature that was recorded as just slightly below 40. So I'm gonna say it's between 39 and 40. Now the downstairs baseboard was measured on one of these, with one of these refrigerator thermometers because of course, there's not normally a thermometer at your downstairs baseboard. The, all of the, these other temperatures are provided by the actual thermostats, have um, thermometers that you can see, record, you can tell, read the temperature of your room. So there's gonna be a little bit of error here, of course, because this, thermos, this thermometer is not necessarily perfectly calibrated. To calibrate this, you'd want to take this thermometer put it next to your upstairs thermometer, record any difference between them, okay? And then adjust that so if there's an offset. Both the upstairs thermometer and this thermometer are the same type of thermometer, it's a metal coil. And the gradations are every two degrees, so you're gonna be limited probably to about a degree. But for the purposes of this demonstration, we're gonna say that it's between 39 and 40. Okay. Now, based on that model, we can see that we get the following result, which is to say that for a given temperature difference between the outside and the upstairs, the downstairs thermostat is at a fraction of 67% of, of the way between them. Okay. And that came out that way even if I used the extreme variations of these particular measurement points. This is to try to incorporate any inaccuracy because of the range uncertainty here. And but the, down, the baseboard, however, was more sensitive, and you might say critically sensitive, to these particular temperatures. So if you go through the numbers, you'll see that the fraction of the baseboard is gonna be 0.34 to two, a range of between 0.34 and 0.39 of the way between the outside temperature 
and the upstairs temperature. This variation is going to be critical, and it's going to it's a certain limitation in this particular analysis. But we'll still get a handle on what's going on. Okay. Now let's take a look at actually turning those into some plots. So using what we call the best case numbers, it turns out this is the best case for us. This, we're hoping that this is the best case for the homeowner because this is the, if the numbers turned out this way, this would be system would be less likely to freeze. Okay. So based on this, this corresponds to the 0.39 number. The baseboard, according to this model, is going to be can be represented as the outside temperature plus 39% of the difference between the upstairs and the outside temperature. 0.39 is higher. That implies that the baseboard is more isolated or has more insulation with respect to the outside. Okay. If it was perfectly insulated from the outside, okay, the outside temperature would just be equal to the upstairs temperature after everything had stabilized. Okay. All of these systems now were in these measurements, we're assuming that temperature is changing slowly. So this is a DC analysis. Okay, temperature has been stable for several hours because several hours is pretty much what it takes for a house to stabilize to a given set of external conditions. Okay, the thermostat is at 0.67 of the way between the upstairs, okay, and the outside temperature. Okay, so these now can be converted into a plot. And let me show you how this elliptical plot looks like. Okay, it's a plot where I've got plotted on the bottom uh, the temperature. This would be the outside temperature. I, I should have labeled that. I have it ranging between 0 and 35. Then I have two plots. One is the thermostat plot line. The other one is the baseboard line. Now the interesting point on this plot will be 32 degrees, because when the baseboard drops below 32 degrees, that's a danger. You're vulnerable to a freeze-up. And on this particular example, we're going to assume that the downstairs thermostat is set to 45, because that corresponds to what happened in the event that we're trying to replicate or explain. And so what happens is, if the thermostat temperature drops below 45, the downstairs zone would actually turn on. So you, even though the baseboard, if the zone downstairs were off, would be below 32, the fact is that since the thermostat has dropped below its setting, you're actually safe. Okay, so this result actually shows a narrow range of vulnerability. If the outside temperature were between 11 and let's say 12 and a half degrees, something like that. It's it's actually only about a one and a half to two degree vulnerable range. In practice, you'd say this system probably could not freeze because of this, because it's highly unlikely that the outside temperature is going to sit exactly at this temperature for several hours required. It could happen, but it just doesn't seem likely. But remember, these were so-called best case numbers when using 0.39. The situation changes quite a bit if you use the 0.34, jump calling the worst case analysis. And the reason for that is the baseboard line now is flattened out. And the vulnerability range has expanded. And it ranges now between, let's say, 10 degrees and 16 degrees. Well, that's a six degree range. If the outside temperature were to fall within this range for a period of several hours, yes, maybe since the downstairs zone is off and it's below 32 degrees and the upstairs zone, I'm sorry, and the thermostat is not going to turn on because the upstairs temperature of 62 degrees is enough to keep that downstairs thermostat from triggering, see, because of this additional heat. So this is this system now is vulnerable. So based on the numbers we have, the system might be only very marginally vulnerable to 
actually vulnerable. And remember, it is a simplified model, so the situation might actually be even slightly worse than this, or it might actually be slightly better if we re refined these temperature measurements, for example. We might find that the system is robust. Well, it probably won't be robust, but it might only be marginal. Um, may not actually fail in practice without a very, very, very special once in a century event. But, or we might find that it's actually very vulnerable. Uh, it might, it, it, this is showing that it's, it is vulnerable just based on this, because we have to be a little bit conservative. Now, let, the other thing that I want to show you here was here's some temperature data, okay, that was taken at a station uh, nearby. And the date is January 28th, 2021. And what happened was, during the day, well, you can see the way this is set up. It, uh, the way they set it up, it, it doesn't end until 6, I'm sorry, until, yeah, midnight. Okay, so it's, it's, it's the calendar day of uh, January 28th. Okay, so what happened is during the day, the temperature is about 28 degrees. Well, you can see, even in the worst case, 28 degrees, system is safe. Baseboard temperature, downstairs zone will not turn on, but of course the baseboard temperature is well above freezing. Okay, now, here's what happened that day. Starting at about four o'clock in the afternoon, the temperature starts dropping. By midnight, it was down to zero degrees. I'm sorry, it was down to 10 degrees, you can see on the scale. Well, 10 degrees, in this scenario, that means it, 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 it transitioned through the vulnerable zone and not only did it transition through it, but it took several hours to get through it. So, for example, to go from 16 degrees to 10 degrees actually took a little over three hours. Now, you might say, in that three hours, the baseboard is getting down um, between 32, and then it's going to drop down to, let's say, 20, 28 or 26 degrees. Now, the baseboard's not gonna freeze right away. It's gonna take probably, you know, if you put water in your freezer, which might be at zero degrees, it might take an hour to freeze it up. So if it was at 27 degrees, is, how long would it take the baseboard to freeze? Well, it might take several hours. Um, so e even this three hours here where it's just marginally below freezing in the baseboard region may not be enough to freeze it. Okay, and 10 degrees, it's now about to drop down below the vulnerability region. So if we go, for example, to the next day, which we, we're interested in what happened that next morning. Okay, now let's just make sure we refresh this with this new temperature, new day, see if it'll come up. Hope it, hope it doesn't crash on me. Oh, came back to the 28th. Um, yeah, it wouldn't let me get to that. Uh, maybe I'm going to have to. But anyway, I'll tell you what happened on the next day. Uh, just because I don't think, it, I don't want to unduly affect this particular. Um, One more time. Oh, maybe I have to view, not refresh. Okay. I think I might have got it. Well, here's what happened in the next morning. Around midnight, the temperature dropped below 10 degrees. It continued dropping down until it hit 2 degrees at 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay, now here's the thing. It continued to drop. Once it drops below about 10, after... Uh, somewhere in the mid early morning hours, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, the downstairs zone should actually turn on. Now, if the downstairs zone were frozen so that the flow of water could not be delivered to the baseboard to thaw it, the temperature is now dropping like a rock all the way down to zero, and it's that way 
for quite a while. And by 8 a.m., that's another five, six, seven, eight hours. Okay? And then, and then it starts warming up, but it's still um, is well below freezing. So, in fact, the entire day, that this was a very, very cold day, see? This entire day is almost below uh the uh, downstairs zone would want to be turning on, but if it froze in that three, 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 three hour window, this would be the potential freeze up. So the study is not certainly not conclusive, um, but it certainly says that it is possible. I wouldn't necessarily go so far as to say that it's likely, um, but. Um, getting some slight, slightly more accurate temperature measurements uh, could probably firm this up. Um, of course, the other possibility for something like this to happen, you might say, well, how else could it have happened? Well, it turned out the, the, other, the other way for this sort of thing to happen is for failure in the, in the, in the uh, hydronic control system so that the downstairs zone just doesn't turn on when it's supposed to. One way for that to happen is if you have air in your hydronic heating system. If air gets in the line, that can prevent water from circulating. And in that case, of course, the freeze up is even more likely than, than this scenario because the downstairs zone doesn't turn on even when it gets extremely cold. Now, it turned out in this case, when work is done on the system to replace a component, there's the possibility for air to get in. And it turns out in this particular case, work was done the system was working after the repair, but it wasn't bled. And that means that over time, a bubble might have coalesced in zone two. And that is another possible explanation for why this could have frozen. It could have been that on an extremely cold day, with the system not off, that's what gave it a hard freeze. The failure of uh, this potential failure was not a hard freeze, it's really, what you might call a light freeze because it's only dropping a couple of degrees below freezing for about three hours. And could that be enough to freeze up the baseboard so that there would be no circulation? Honestly, I can't say. Um, so I'm gonna say that based on this data, each of these scenarios are likely, and I, I wouldn't favor one over the other. I would have to assume that e e each one is, is as likely as, as the other scenario. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. The, um, the key on something like this, of course, is on a system like this, if you set the downstairs zone thermostat too low or the upstairs zone too high, combination of these two, it'll prevent the downstairs zone from turning on. And on a very cold day, combination of turning this one down too low and this one too high will result, could result in a freeze up now. This thermostat has a, the lowest possible setting is 40. It was set to 45 in this case. Setting this to 40 or and or in conjunction with setting this higher than 62, for example, as high as 68 or 70, this could definitely produce a freeze. In the con configuration that it was with this at 45 and this at 62, it's, it's, it's what I would call, it still seems somewhat marginal. Um, 